from the rolling hills of South Central Florida, this is Far Out Radio. I'm Scott Teeters, and today is Tuesday. It's April the 22nd, 2014. I hope you had a good day. I've got a question for you. How's your bite? I mean, your dental bite, that is. Most people would say, it's fine. Why? <laughs> Well, Dr. Larry Lytle is back with us this evening. Dr. Lytle was with us last week to review the basic principles of his Q-Laser healing system. And you can enjoy Dr. Lytle's presentation by clicking on the archives link at faroutradio.com. Dr. Lytle has been a dentist since 1964, and he's with us this evening to tell us about the seldom-talked-about condition called dental distress syndrome also known as DDS. Now, the word syndrome simply means a group of symptoms that are coll- that collectively indicate or characterize a disease, psychological disorder, or other abnormal condition. Well, it seems that research has concluded that when the upper and lower jaw are not in their unique, proper alignment, all sorts of seemingly unrelated health issues can manifest, both physical and mental. It reminds me of the story of uh, actor Burt Reynolds, uh, something he experienced back in 1984 uh, when he was accidentally hit in the face with a chair while filming the movie City Heat with Clint Eastwood. The chair was supposed to be a breakaway prop, but instead it was a real metal chair. Uh, The accident happened on the first day of filming, and it broke Burt's jaw, thus causing all sorts of seemingly unrelated problems. The pain medication caused people to speculate if he had a drug problem. And then his weight loss uh, started the rumor that uh, that he might have had AIDS. Uh, Finally, a doctor in San Diego, Dr. Gus Schwab, worked with Bert to get his bite right and to get them all fixed up. Well, not everyone with uh, dental distress syndrome uh, has uh, the condition as a result of a serious injury, such as Bert Reynolds, but DDS, dental distress syndrome, can happen to anyone, and the odds are that many are suffering various conditions that may well have their root cause in jaw misalignment. Dr. Lyle is with us tonight to tell us more about this condition that probably is more common than we realize, and uh, uh, we'll be reviewing some of the causes and the symptoms and ways to fix this condition besides having all your teeth recapped like poor Bert did. Dr. Lytle, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Scott. I'm glad to be here. Dr. Lytle, thanks for being back with us uh, on Far Out Radio. And, you know, I can't help but wonder why it is that so many conditions have their root cause in something that's very, very simple. I mean, when I was reviewing the uh, DDS material that you sent me, uh, I thought of how um, I thought of uh, chronic dehydration that has so many um, uh, co- so many uh, symptoms that go along with it that are oftentimes treated with powerful and often toxic drugs um, when the real root condition is being dehydrated. Uh, something as simple as back, back posture. Uh, can lead to all kinds of potentially dangerous physical therapy protocols. And the root cause is just sitting and standing up straight. You know, or in the case of being dehydrated, the, the solution is uh, drinking more water. Um, so it, it's just always amazed me that a lot of times simple things can end up causing profound problems. And it makes me wonder if in our modern society, if we're just not enamored with any kind of a high-tech pharmaceutical solution to what are basically simple problems. Well, certainly we we have become a a drug-addicted society. Uh, Most often those are the counter drugs, sometimes prescription drugs, rather than street drugs. But Mm -hmm. we certainly run to the pharmacy every time we have an ache or a pain or we have a problem and want to fix that symptom. Uh, My my experience has been to go back to the root cause of what's causing the problem rather than just trying to fix the symptom. Uh, Scott, this subject that we're going to talk about today is uh, going to be better explained on a tape where you can see pictures. And if your listeners would would call this number at 866-434-434, Five nine five nine, code eight three five nine. They are going to get a free brochure 
explaining this, uh, what we're talking about today. Okay. Furthermore, if they're if they would call six zero five three four two, let's back up. Let me give you the other number: six zero five seven nine one six zero six zero. I'm going to instruct the people that answer that phone to send your listeners a free DVD that will show pictures of what we're going to talk about. Okay, terrific. Thank you. Let me say that again. That's 605-791-6060. Now, let's go back to the beginning and explain how the body is formed. An egg and a sperm meet, and that forms what we call a fertilized zygote, which is the beginning of the, of the fetus. It starts as a little neural tube, which if you could picture your finger, all your listeners, if you do this with me, just pick your hand up and curl your finger and look at your forefinger. The part that hangs down is called the neural tube. The knuckle that sticks up would be the neural crest. From that develops the entire body. The part that sticks down, the neural tube, forms the central nervous system. This would be your spinal cord, all of your brain, and the ten cranial nerves. And in spite of what most people think, the four anterior teeth are part of this central nervous system. They come from the same tissue as you, does your brain and spinal cord and the ten cranial nerves, all except the enamel. The enamel comes from dermal tissue, but the teeth themselves come from brain, from the very same brain tissue the, the rest of those neurological organs come from. Now, the part that sticks up, the neural crest, forms all of your peripheral nervous system. That would be the everything that has to do with your sense sense of sight, sense of smell, uh, sense of touch. All of those senses bring stimuli to the brain, and that's through your autonomic or automatic nervous system. And that automatic or autonomic nervous system is divided into two sections, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. Most of us are constantly bombarded by the symptoms of the sympathetic nervous system. That system is what we interpret as stress. That is the, that part of overburdening that system is what sends us to the drugstore to get the Tylenol to treat mm -hmm. the joint pains. What most people do not understand is that there is such a thing as internal stress, or as my teacher, Dr. L. Fonder, wrote the book, Dental Distress Syndrome, that's abbreviated DDS, not Doctor of Dental Surgery, but mm -hmm. Dental Distress Syndrome, that is a stress that goes with you all the time. You can't go to the beach and free yourself up of, of, from stress of work if you carry with you the relationship of the lower jaw to the skull that's inaccurate, like you told earlier about Burt Reynolds. Right. You take that with you wherever you go, and therefore that internal stress is the greatest stressor in the world. Most Americans suffer from it. They do not know they suffer from it because it is not easily diagnosed by medical doctors or dentists or chiropractors, it is, a, it is a condition that's been rather ignored. Now, my teacher, Dr. L. Fonder, spoke of that condition years, 55 years ago, actually. Uh, he was starting to try to teach the medical doctors and dentists about this profession. And when he went to the, to the dentist, the dentist said, oh, we can't be involved in that. I mean, we're too busy, drill, fill, fill, and pulling and plating them. 
uh, <laughs> to, to be involved in anything that involves the, the health of the body. And he went to the medical doctors, and the medical doctors said, oh, wow, that, that's in the field of dentistry. We, we, we don't know anything about the oral cavity. But the relationship of the lower jaw to the skull regulates the function of the parasympathetic division of the autonomic which regulates your internal organs. That is a big, big problem in the United States today. Dr. Lyle, how in the world could the medical community ignore this because everything begins with the first bite <laughs> or first sip? You know, everything you eat and you drink, I mean, that starts the whole process from, you know, from the time we, we take our, our first bit of nutrient when we're, when we're infants all the way up to the very end. It all starts right there. How could they ignore that? Well, it, it's easy for all of us to want to blame something. You know, that's the nature of the way Americans are. We, we want to blame it. It's because I slept crooked last night or I stepped off the, the the curb and, and and twisted my neck or back. But here is the truth. When you lose the height of your back teeth and the front teeth hit first, you are an accident waiting to happen. Now here's a little test that all your listeners can do, and you can do it, Scott, along with me, if you'd like. Uh-huh. Reach over and tear off a piece of paper off of something about the width of a of a pencil or a pen, a narrow piece of paper about an inch and a half long. Take that piece of paper between your fingers, put it between your front teeth, bite firmly on your back teeth, and then while biting on the back teeth, pull on that paper. What happens? Uh. If you have a piece of paper close to you and you do that, most of you will find the paper tears because the front teeth are hitting and that putting pressure on that paper and then pull on the paper tears in half. If your back teeth are of sufficient height, then when you bite together, your front teeth do not hit when you bite on your back teeth. Now, don't get me wrong. The front teeth are supposed to hit when you slide your jaw forward. Right. When you slide your jaw forward, you should be able to bite off and tell the thickness of an eyebrow between an eyelash. That's how delicate the proprioception is between the front teeth. So when you, when your back teeth lose height, now they lose height, Scott, for a, a number of reasons. Uh, most often they lose height because we just get older and the teeth wear down as any, any old animal, the teeth wear down, and as they wear down, the front teeth hit sooner. Or if you have had a lot of cavities and your teeth wear down, they're replaced with most often mercury amalgam fillings. And when those teeth are filled with that type of material, or maybe they're filled with composite, it doesn't make any difference. The dentist will never fill the teeth, overfill them, and fill them too high. If they fill them too high, that makes the tooth sore. So the dentist takes every single filling out of occlusion before he sends you out of the dental office. That out of occlusion means that that new filling doesn't touch. But as he does that to one tooth and another molar and another molar and another molar, all of those teeth increasingly get shorter. And as they get shorter, then your front teeth hit up and behind. Your lower front teeth hit up in the back of your upper front teeth. When that happens, because your front teeth are extensions of your central nervous system, the body says, fix that muscles. you got to fix that now. There are 60 eight pair of muscles that run the lower jaw, that, that sling it from the skull. These 68 pair of muscles that must work in harmony where the left side works in harmony with the right side. 
And if you lose a tooth on the, the right side, or if you lose the height of the tooth on the right side, then that side collapses a little bit, allowing the front teeth to touch up and back, the lower front teeth to touch up and back, the upper front teeth, and the brain says, that can't happen. Don't do that. So the muscles that run the lower jaw will tighten up. And as those muscles tighten up, they'll pull the jaw back. And you say, oh, my dentist says I have a good bite. And true, when you bite together on that little group paper, go off, clack your teeth together, your, your bite registers nicely because the muscles have pulled the jaw back to where it registers on the blue paper, paper normally. But the problem is now those muscles are working overtime. And, Scott, as those muscles work overtime, they get sore, just like you work a, a, a leg muscle, a bicep or a muscle, or over time that muscle gets sore. As it gets sore, it tightens up. When it tightens up, the blood flow to the brain is interfered with because the blood coming from your heart up through your neck flows through and between muscles. If those muscles tighten up, you then have the, the reduced blood flow. And since you have reduced blood flow, you have reduced oxygen to the brain. And hence, we have a lifetime of problems because of the relationship of the lower jaw to the skull. That's just stunning. <laughs> it really is. And I'm glad so that... It's so simple, that, it, it, but yet it's so serious. That's what I mean. It's, it so reminds me of the drinking water bit. And I'm very glad that we don't have a video of me here, because I look pretty silly here with a piece of paper in my mouth. So <laughs> but to go back to that little test, and I, and I hope our, maybe some of our listeners are doing the same thing. You take a small piece of paper and you do what with it? Well, just just tear a piece off the bottom of a piece of paper laying next to you. I've got a piece of paper here. I'm going to tear off a little piece. Now, this little piece of paper is about as wide as a fountain pen, maybe three-eighths of an inch wide, and it's an inch and a half long. So I can pick it up by the tip of the, the paper and stick the other end of it between my teeth and then bite firmly on your back teeth, keeping pressure on your back teeth, pull on the paper. Does it free up or does it stick? Well, for me, it just slides right out. Well, you're pretty lucky then, Scott. <laughs> I mean, you're, I, you're one thank probably you, three or four or five percent that <laughs> have that situation. Now, thank make you, sure Dr. You're not, make sure you're not jutting your jaw forward. If you stick your jaw forward or, or to one side, yeah, you'll change it. But the purpose of this little simple test is to bite on your back teeth. And when you bite on your back teeth, the front teeth should disengage. The front hmm. teeth should not be hitting when you're biting on your back teeth. They should only be hitting when you slide your jaw forward or slide off to the side. Uh, but they should not hit when you bite on your back teeth. Very few people will meet that criteria. If you've lost a tooth, your teeth automatically lose vertical dimension. Now this is really very hard, Scott, to picture, but you have an advanced group of listeners. So think, just remove all the muscles and skin and from the face and think only of the bone. Skull. The lower jaw is slung from the skull entirely by muscles. It doesn't have ligaments like the knee or the hip. It's entirely slung from the skull by muscles. Now, when those muscles tighten up and you have lost your posterior support, as those muscles tighten up, then the jaw is pushed up and back towards the ear. And if the head of the jaw, called the condyle, is pushed up and back towards the ear, there's a little fossa that the jaw works in 
A lot of people call that the temporomandibular joint, or TMJ. When that jaw is shoved up and back, it puts pressure on the venous drainage from the brain. Now, there's a little groove up and back in that fossa, which the carotid vein runs. And that carotid vein drains blood from the brain. Now, the, the blood goes to the brain through the carotid artery. And if the muscles are tight, it reduces blood flow to the brain because the muscles are tightening up around that little tiny garden hose type feeding system of blood to the brain. And you can picture this. If you have a garden hose, squeeze it, you're going to reduce the blood flow. Now that the blood is in the brain and the muscles tighten up, push the jaw up and back, the blood can't get out of the brain. It can't drain from the brain. And hence today we're seeing a lot more situation of what we call, it is not stroke. They misdiagnose it as stroke, but it's a cerebral vascular accident, meaning that there's a problem with the bleeding of arteries into the brain tissue. And that if, if, it, if those arteries rupture, close to your speech, then you have a problem with your speech. If it ruptures close to your eye centers of the brain, you have problems seeing. If it ruptures close to your your muscular control system, you have trouble walking, or maybe you have numbness in one arm. Today, we always thought, the doctors always thought in the past, anything wrong with the brain is that you had plaque in the arteries, spot in the arteries. And that clot caused less blood flow to the brain. The problem is much more severe when the blood can't get out of the brain and you have a leakage of the art. Well, now there's something you just never hear people talk about. Doctor, we're going to have to take our break. Uh, pardon, the, pardon the intentional pun, but this is really jaw-dropping stuff. <laughs> Okay. If you're just joining us, listeners, Dr. Larry Lyle is back with us tonight, and we're talking about his amazing work with dental distress syndrome, and we'll be more into this topic on the other side of our break on Far Out Radio. Be right back. And we are back. If you're just joining us this evening, Dr. Larry Lytle is back with us this evening. We're talking about his amazing work with dental distress syndrome, otherwise known as DDS. And you can learn more about Dr. Lytle's work with this uh, unusual condition. Get some more information by calling this telephone number. It's 866 866- 434-5959. That's 866-434-5959. And then enter the following code number, 8359. That code number, again, is 8359. Uh, leave your name, address, and email address, and they'll get right back to you. Also, if you want to call 605-791-6060, you can get a free DVD that will explain everything we're talking about here this evening. Dr. Lytle, I'm looking at this astonishingly long uh, list of uh, um, symptoms and conditions, and I can't help but wonder if if somebody, you know, is having a problem with, uh, I don't know, cold hands and feet, how do you sort out, other than the little paper test between your front teeth, how do you sort out whether or not it's some other problem or whether it's your jaw? Well, Scott, basically, if you've got cold hands and cold feet, that you don't have to go any further. You know you have reduced blood flow to the hands and feet. So if you have reduced blood flow to the hands and feet, that is a, that is a function of your, of your nervous system. And if you balance the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system, you won't have cold hands and cold feet. So all of this is a balance between the sympathetic division and the parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. So it doesn't take a whole lot of testing. Uh, We're more about knowledge than we are testing. Mm -hmm. Uh, If if one uh, tests, then tests produce a lot of, sometimes the tests are erroneous. And if a test is erroneous, that brings on fear, and fear brings on bad things. When you have fear and all fear's ugly cousins, it makes bad things things happen with your mind, your brain, and your mind. So I'm a a believer that we treat the symptoms, 
the best way to treat the Simpsons with the Q laser system, which we talked about before, the Q laser system will immediately release these tight muscles. All, it's a handheld device, and it's like a cordless phone in size, and you aim that at the tight muscles in the neck and the, and the jaw, and it releases these tight muscles rather quickly in, in a, less than a minute. Sometimes people have to release them twice a day because these 68 pair of muscles that control the relationship of the lower jaw to the skull will tighten back up as soon as you, as you eat. And many times they tighten up as soon as you swallow. The average person is reported to swallow once every 30 seconds. Now, when you swallow, your teeth do come together. If that signal triggers those muscles to tighten up, then the muscles tighten up and you reduce blood flow to the brain, pulls the jaw up and back, and reduces venous drainage from the brain, and... All of this happens at simultaneously while you're reducing the signal from the brain to the internal organ system. The heart, if you have heart palpitations, you should take a look at the faulty proprioceptions of the brain from the lack of the height of the back teeth. Now, here, here is a really serious problem, Scott, that most people have if they've had an accident and their head goes beep, beep, and, and flops on, that head is like 16 pounds. It's a bowling ball on top of a, a loose stem of vertebra. If that bowling ball takes a flip-flop forward and backward, you have what doctors diagnose as, as a, when you stretch the neck that way, back and forth, you end, you end up with a condition where those muscles will tighten up, and when the muscles tighten up, it then in orthodontically puts pressure on the teeth. And that whiplash action will put pressure on the muscles that put pressure on the teeth and orthodontically move the teeth into the bone. Now, we all know that you can move teeth front and back and side to side. But when you put pressure on the teeth in a totally healthy mouth, without fillings, without any extractions, if you've ever had a whiplash situation, then your teeth are, are orthodontically, the back teeth, are orthodontically moved into the bone, and that allows your front teeth to hit too soon, as we spoke in the first section of this program. Mm -hmm. And when the front teeth hit too soon, that creates a stress mechanism. And that releases the, all what we know about stress, the flight or fight response is released through the, the hypothalamus part of the brain. And, and you will say, I don't know what's stressing me out. I, I'm not, I haven't lost my job. I, my marriage is fine. I'm eating right. I'm exercising. I don't have financial problems, but boy, do I feel stressed out. Those people have their front teeth hitting too soon because the back teeth are too short. So this condition not only affects, uh, we're not talking about jaw pain here, Scott. That's the least of what I'm talking about. If you have jaw pain, there are a lot of dentists that will give you uh, some type of a night guard or something, which mm -hmm. I despise. I think that's just, that's propagating the problem. It is not fixing it, because the night guard puts pressure on the front teeth and accentuates the problem. A proper device in the mouth would disengage the front teeth so that the front teeth are free and not hitting. Uh, so if you have to go to appliance, then I, I have a laboratory that makes an appliance for those more serious cases that cannot get results from the applying the Q laser system to release the muscles. Then there is a laboratory called DWOT, all capital letters. Letters D E W O T, and that address is 3939 Canyon Lake Drive, Rapid City, South Dakota. If your listeners would mail in a, a models of their mouth to that address, they can order then a device that fits over their back teeth, and 
temporarily increases the height of the back knee, and you will see some miraculous things happen uh, in turn uh, in related to the internal organs because you're increasing the height of the back knee, you're increasing the signal that's sent to the parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. I don't know how to make this simpler, but believe me, the way the jaw fits the skull is a lot more than eating food. Doctor, we have a break coming up, but uh, you can start in on this, but you know, and finishing up on the other side. But if some, if one of our listeners is, you know, while they were listening to the program, tore off a little piece of paper and they did the the paper in the front teeth uh, test and found that the only way they could get that piece of paper out was to rip it, where do they start to go to get fixed? Do they go to their dentist? Should they go to a doctor? And and what ex- explain what to them? answer both those questions is don't go to either one. Uh, this is where the medical profession and dental profession have dropped this important subject in the crack between the two You're professions. Listening. Neither one wants to You know what, doctor, I realize we, we have to take our break. I just heard a commercial, so we'll be back in a couple of minutes with more conversation with Dr. Larry Lytle. Possibly your ideal clients or customers are just like you. People who enjoy in-depth, insightful interviews not normally heard on mainstream media. Far Out Radio with Scott Teeters is actively marketed to Rents.com readers with banner ads and is supported with pages and archive programs at RentsRadio.com. The popular show has a growing base of loyal fans and is promoted on its own site, FarOutRadio.com, and has an aggressive social media campaign. And now you can benefit from this remarkable new program. Contact FarOutRadio.com for very affordable online and on-air advertising opportunities. That's FarOutRadio.com. Okay, we are back. We're uh, welcome to our last segment this evening with our guest, Dr. Larry Lytle. We're talking about his amazing work with a condition called DDS, Dental Distress Syndrome. Doctor, there's a there's a long shopping list here of uh, <laughs> of problems. Would you like to run through them, or should I? You go ahead, Scott. Okay, <laughs> get ready, folks. You don't have to take notes. Allergies, depression, body aches and numbness, cold hands and feet, constipation, bladder and kidney complications, dermatitis, dizziness, fatigue, forgetfulness, frequent urination, gynecological problems, ulcers, headaches. Hearing loss, indigestion, insomnia, nervousness, sexual dysfunction, sinusitis, worry, suicidal tendencies, hypertension, high blood pressure, and many other symptoms. Yikes. These are all things that that we would all dash off to the doctor and say, you know, Doc, I got hypertension and high blood pressure. You know, I need some of those statins. You know, and, and then you're really on the slippery slope. So we were saying before the uh, – you were saying before the, uh, the commercial break that really the um, – the dentist and the doctor probably isn't the right place to do. So what should our listeners do? Well, the dentists have not been taught this. So your dentist or your medical doctor, they're not bad men and women. They're good people. You can't know what you don't know. So if if you haven't been taught this subject that I'm discussing, what I'm discussing goes back as far as as medical books go back. And, And the relationship of the lower jaw to the skull, a lot of times, if you don't release the muscles before you get your teeth rebuilt or changed, it's changed in the wrong pattern. And you may spend a whole lot of money getting a mouthful of of new crowns only to find that you are not fixed. You're worse off, not better. You may spend a whole lot of money getting all your mercury fillings removed thinking that mercury, which is a toxic metal, is responsible for all your problems. And you've removed all your mercury fillings to get a mouthful of composite fillings, only to find that you are worse, not better. If you take those problems, the medical doctor is going to say, I don't know anything about that. That's your dentist. Your dentist should know about that. But the holistic dentist... On a, on a whole, do not know about the relationship of the lower jaw to the skull. They know toxic materials. They know to re- remove mercury fillings. I've taught this subject for years now. I started teaching 
in 1998 in this area. I've done surveys of audiences that I've talked to. Across the board, 9 out of 10 people that have had their mercury fillings removed are no better off than before they had them. Wow. Now that, that, you know, you think you're removing a toxic element, metal, from the mouth, and, and I'm not claiming mercury isn't toxic. It's a toxic mm -hmm. substance and should not be used in the mouth. But to remove it by someone that calls themselves a holistic dentist that doesn't pay attention to the height of the back teeth when he removes it is not going to make you better. You, you and that, 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 procedure is, that procedure is extensive and expensive. Oh, of course it's. Anything you do in the mouth is expensive. Uh, expensive. I mean, uh, literally, dentists are brain surgeons. They work in millimeters all the time, just like your brain surgeon. But on the, if they don't know that when they remove a, a, a mouthful of mercury fillings and the, and the composite fillings should be all of them built to a higher level than the mercury fillings, then your dentist has not studied what I understand, what I've studied. And and that's why many of the people that have their mercury fillings removed are not happy about it because they're no better. Their mm -hmm. symptoms continue to worsen. Now, there's no question about that the relationship of the jaw can affect your pancreas, it can affect the way your blood sugar is. We have done studies with our laser system on diabetes and we have lowered diabetes by 70% by using the laser on it. We have done double-blind placebo-controlled studies with our laser system on high blood pressure. 96% of the people can lower their high blood pressure without the use of drugs by applying the laser. How does that work? We, have, we release these tight muscles because we apply the laser in the oral cavity area and over, the, over the jaw, right in front of the ear, under the ankle, the jaw, and below the collarbone. And when you apply the laser there, this releases those tight muscles. You get good blood flow back to the brain, and your body says thank you, and your blood pressure goes down. And uh, the when you constantly use the laser in these areas of proprioception, where the and these are, proprioception is a big word. I wish we could find a smaller one that said the same thing. But proprioception is a method of your body protecting itself in its environment. And it tries to protect itself. And when you lose the height of the back teeth, the muscles tighten up trying to protect itself. And when they tighten up, you get reduced blood flow to the brain. When you get reduced blood flow to the brain, you get oxygen depletion to the brain, and when you have oxygen depletion, nothing good happens. You get, If you're older, you get senile, and, and you get Alzheimer's. If you're younger, you flunk out of school uh, because your brain isn't getting enough oxygen, and the person just does not know what's happening. It, hmm. it's, a, it's a serious problem. Uh, I can relate this with one study or one single person. This young lady was a the only daughter of a of a rancher up in Wyoming and she graduated from that their high school with honors and went to the University of Wyoming first two years she was doing fine and she was in the B average and all of a sudden the, the school called the parents said get up here they got up there and their daughter was flunking out of school they thought maybe she was on drugs or alcohol but none of that was true she was living a clean life. She said, I have brain fog. I just cannot think. I cannot remember what I'm supposed to remember. And they had a lot of money, so they took her all over the United States to every brain center that claimed they could do anything for her. And all they could come up with is she has latent brain damage mm -hmm. from birth. They then went to one of my colleagues, Lyndon Smith, who wrote the book, Feed Yourself Right, or Feed Your Kids Right First and Feed Yourself Right, they went all the way through his diet stuff. Nothing good happened. Then in that book, they read something about removing mercury fillings. And so they called 
Dr. Smith. And he said, well, the closest guy to you that knows anything about that's Lytle. Go see Lytle in Rapid City, South Dakota. They came to my office with the intention of getting the mercury fillings removed. When she walked in, I could see it wasn't a mercury filling problem. And I told her and the parents, I said, I could remove them, but I don't think that will fix your daughter's brain fog. What will fix it is getting more blood flow to the brain. She has, her back teeth are too short. We need to increase the height of her back teeth a little bit by putting something over them. And within a few minutes, I placed a white tooth-colored composite material right over the top of her mercury fillings and just kind of filled up the, 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 the V that's in the teeth. I kind of leveled that off. And they stayed in town that night. It took me maybe 15 minutes to do that, not very long. They stayed in Rapid City because they came about seven-hour drive. And the next morning, she pranced into the office and says, my brain fog has lifted. How about and, that? Yeah, and two years later, she graduated school from Wyoming. And then about five more years went by, and I had never heard from her. And, some, and she walked into the office and said, do you remember me? And I said, I do. And she said, I want to thank you because you changed my life. I graduated from the University of Wyoming with honors. I went on to teach school and got married and and have children. And she said, I'd never done any of that had it not been for you raising the height of my back teeth. Now, I said, well, did you ever get those mercury fillings removed? And those little splints I put on there removed. She said, no. And I said, can I look at them? And she said, yes. So I looked in the mouth, and there they were seven years later. I could see little chips of that that composite material had come loose, and I could see the mercury filling underneath of them. She only had a few mercury fillings, not a whole mouthful. I could only see a little of that mercury filling showing through. And I said, I told you to get those removed. And she said, well, why? I'm, I feel wonderful, and I'd have no tooth problem. And it looked like somebody did some bad dentistry for her. But the, the crowning thing of this story, Scott, is that shortly after I had put those splints in, her mother called me and she said, what would you have done that would have changed the relationship of my daughter having a condition that affects her her female organ system. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, apparently, the mother and the daughter both had a condition where the the, the lips, the bulbous port of, portion of the vagina swelled up and weeped and became crusty, and nobody could find out what was going on. And they went. They were going to a, a psychiatrist in, in Denver, Colorado, oh for that condition because nobody knew what it, what was going on. Once we raised the height of her back teeth, that affected the entire autonomic nervous system, including the signal to the female portion of her uh, her female organs. Wow. And that condition went away. That's just astonishing. I won't say jaw-dropping. That's astonishing. Doctor, we're all out of time. It flies by so fast when you're with us. And I always enjoy talking with you. Thank you very, very much. This is uh, this is really something. And the Q-Laser, uh, wow. Uh, now I know why in the book that comes with the device, the book titled Low-Level Laser Application Guide, on page 36 you have a chart there showing the uh, proprioceptive points uh, that are uh, on the side of the, uh, the jaw, in front of the uh, ear, on the neck, and then on the top of the chest. And now I more clearly understand why you need to do that all the time. So thank you very much. Dr. Lytle. Welcome. I'll, I'll, if you ever want to get into... Uh Memory and learning, give me a call. I, I'll, do I'm, I'll do that, we're sir. I'm working on memory and learning at this moment. Thank you very, very much, and I, and I hope we can do this again soon. Thanks. That is our program for this evening. Uh, Dr. Larry Lytle, if you want some more uh, information, give him a call at 866-434-5959 and enter in the code 8359 or call the number 605 605- Seven nine one six zero six zero, and you can get a free DVD that explains everything we were talking about this evening. That's it for me. I'm out of here. We got to go. We'll be back tomorrow night with more Far Out Radio.
Small business entrepreneurs, do you want to optimize your website, get more business, but your budget is small? So what's your wish list? A professional look, a blog site where you edit and create pages yourself integrated with social media tools? This is Jeff Rents for FreeSpiritDesignStudio.com with Scott and Karen Teeters. You can get a great-looking turnkey 3.0 WordPress website very inexpensively. Your new site will be professionally designed, set up fast with search engine, social media, and blog optimization. And you'll be trained how to easily maintain your own new site. Get a free consultation today with absolutely no obligation from FreeSpiritDesignStudio.com. Take the first step to owning a site that your business deserves, created by FreeSpiritDesignStudio.com. 